morning, everybody. So today for our first chapter Friday, I'm going to read the first chapter of The Poet's Life of Cuba, a biography of Juan Francisco Manzano. Um, now, if you remember, a biography is when someone else tells the story of a person. So our author, Margarita Engel, writes the story of his life, who is um, a poet um, from uh, way back in the... Uh, let me try to remember the time frame, set late 1700s, early 1800s, who was a slave but had um, hope and vision of the future. And in this particular book, then you can see some of his actual works in the back um, so that you can read some of his pieces and um, see the, his language and then translate it. Um, so this is 19th century Spanish. And then she has her kind of modernized translation. But this book is her own, her own words about his life. Um, but I did love the first poem. Um, so there's some 19th century Spanish for you. And then her translation is this. Songs follow you of peace, love, and good fortune. Offered to the poet who kisses these waters. Virtue, inspiration, and strength. And I hope during our shutdown that we all kind of hold that virtue, inspiration, and strength. Okay, so chapter one, one. My mind is a brush made of feathers, painting pictures of words. I remember all that I see, every syllable, each word a twin of itself, telling two stories at the same time. One of sorrow, the other hope. I love the words written with my feathery mind in the air and with my sharp fingernails on leaves in the garden. When my owner catches a whiff of the fragrance of words engraved in the flesh of succulent geranium leaves or the perfumed petals of the alili flowers, then she frowns because she knows that I dream with my feathers, my wings. Poetry cools me, syllables calm me, I read the verses of others, the free men, and know that I'm never alone. Poetry sets me aflame. I grow furious, dangerous, a blaze of soul and heart, a fiery tongue, a lantern at midnight. My first owner was sweet to me. I was her pet, a kind of new poodle. My mother, my pretty mother, chosen to be her personal handmaid. My mother, Maria del Pilar Manzano, a slave. Together, we belonged, along with countless others, human beasts of burden, to Doña Beatriz de Justice, La Marquesa, the proud Marquilnes Justice de Santa Ana, noble wife of Don Juan Manzano, who shares my name, even though he is not my father. Don Juan rules El Molino, his plantation on this island of sugar and many other sweet illusions. These were my mother's duties. Dress la marquesa, undress her, cool her skin with a palm leaf fan, answer questions, never ask. Collect milk from new mothers in the huts near the fields. Slave milk, the lotion used for softening the skin of noble ladies. This my mother accomplished. Deliver the milk. Grind eggshells and rice into powder for making la cascarilla, a pale shell for hiding the darkness of Spaniards who pretend to be pale in our presence. When the noble ladies go out in public, milk soothed, eggshell crusted, masked in disguise, we no longer look the same, dark owner and dark slaves. Now my owner is ghostly inside her skeleton of powder, but I, being only a poodle, can watch. I am allowed to know these truths about shadow and bright. So I listen when the ghost owner calls me her own baby. She plays with me and even decides to set my true mother free free to marry Toribio de Castro, a man also promised his freedom. My father is winged like my mother. Oh, I envy them. What will happen to me, little bird, left behind in this haunted nest? She takes me with her wherever she goes. I become the companion of my owner, noble ghost. No, not a companion, remember? A poodle, her pet, with my curly dark hair and small child's brown skin, suitable for the theater and parties. So I bark on command. I learn to whine and howl and verse. I'm known as the smart one who never forgets. 
I can listen, then recite every word. Listen, she says to her friends and the priest. See how little Juanito can sing. See how I've trained him. Watch him perform. Back and forth, over and over. Country home, city home, palaces, the plantation. Only six years old, she says, but listen to his big, funny voice. Back and forth, over and over. I recite strange words in several languages, Spanish, Latin, French, while my sweet ghost mama owner and all her friends listen. They are forgetful. I am rememberful. I remember there is also one more mother in my song, a bird mother, caged but winged. And so that is our first chapter of The Poet Slave of Cuba. I hope you want to learn more about Juan Francisco Manzano and his life and times and the beauty of his words. I am including one slice of his poetry in our poetry handout that we have on Google Classroom. If you're so interested to look, you may. And I can't wait to see you guys back um, at some point in time. Love and miss you guys.